Hey, with the release of Next.js 13's app directory and the slow adoption of React server components, it feels like we're going back in time where server-side rendering frameworks are of the norm, like Django or even Java serverlet technologies. In this video, we'll discuss why this change is stirring such a commotion within the web development community. I will also explain the difference between client-side rendering and server-side rendering, going more in-depth in the difference between this kind of rendering strategies. I will see how this actually ties in with the relationship with Next.js and React. So, to understand this big paradigm shift, we must first understand the relationship when it comes to client and server and the context of it is web development. So here, we have the client and the server. So what exactly are they? The client is basically what your customer or your users are, are using. So this may be like a phone or like a, a laptop. Basically, it's what the user is using to view your website. And the server is basically a dedicated computing service to go and serve out any resources that's requested by the client. So usually, a client will make a request to the server, like slash they are asking for index.html, or let's say they are visiting a root cause slash dashboard. So it will request this using HTTP, which is the hypertext transfer protocol. And then the server will basically look at whatever the resource is trying to request. Like it will look at index.html or it will look at dashboard. The server will then run its logic to go and figure out what kind of resource the client is exactly wanting it from the server. And after it has processed it, what it will do is it will then return a response returning like HTML, JS files or even CSS files. And the client browser like Firefox or Chrome will look at these three files, these three types of files mainly, and then you'll use this information to go and paint the browser and paint the website for you. So that's the difference between a client and server in the context of web development. In client-side rendering, so we're now comparing server-side and client-side rendering. In client-side rendering, the initial HTML content, so whatever the server returns, this HTML file, like HTML, like index or HTML, the initial HTML content is very minimal and the majority of rendering and interaction logic is actually handled on the client side, meaning the user web browser is actually doing a lot of heavy lifting in order to paint the browser and paint the web however the developer wants it to look like. So when a user visits a CSR powered website, the browser downloads a minimal HTML file and a bundle of JavaScript code. The JavaScript code is responsible for fetching the data and rendering the user interface in the browser. Here's a process of how uh, the workflow is like in CSR. So the user requests a page from the server. And then the server re responds with a barebone HTML file that includes a reference to the JavaScript bundle. So in this HTML file, there may be a script tag that references like a bundle.js file. And within the bundle.js file, the browser will go and try to download whatever JavaScript that it needs. The JavaScript code will then run in the browser and it will fetch all the required data from an external API or from the server. And then once the data has been fetched, the React a library will then re render the component, update the DOM accordingly. The user can then interact with the website and any further updates or page transitions are handled by JavaScript in the browser. Client-side rendering is great for building dynamic and interactive web applications because it allows for a very fast if initial page loads since the server only needs to send back a very minimum HTML file. However, it has some drawbacks such as slower time to content, since the initial rendering happens in the browser, it requires a lot of work just to go and fetch the data and then uh, display it. And also, it will have very poor search engine optimization because search engine crawlers like Google will not be able to see the actual HTML content that is being returned for the client. Now, we talk about server-side rendering, right? In server-side rendering, the server is responsible for rendering the React components and returning a fully popular HTML page in the browser. The server will execute the React code and generate the HTML content dynamically on the server itself. So the difference is that on client-side rendering, the rendering happens on the client, whereas for server-side rendering, the server does the majority of the work. So the server will create the HTML content and then it will send back a fully populated HTML document. The process works like this. The user will request the page from the server. The server executes the code to generate the complete HTML content. It will then send a fully populated HTML page to the browser. The browser will receive the HTML page and then it can directly start rendering it immediately without the need for additional JavaScript to execute. Then, the user can see the fully rendered page and interact with it right away. Server-side rendering is advantageous for several reasons. It provides better initial load times, improves search optimization, as search engine crawlers like Google are able to index the fully rendered HTML content, and it will give ex enhanced accessibility since the content is available even without JavaScript rendering on the browser. So React is a popular JavaScript library that builds user interfaces. However, Next.js is a framework built on top of React that adds additional features and optimizations like server-side rendering. Next.js being a React, a meta framework, right? Because it builds on top of React, 
It will actually support both client-side rendering and server-side rendering, and it offers a very easy way to configure and switch between these two different rendering modes, depending on our application's needs. And NextJS allows us to choose between client-side rendering and server-side rendering, or even hybrid rendering, where specific pages can actually be rendered on the server while others are on the client. And as web developers, understanding these concepts will help you choose the appropriate rendering strategies based on the requirements of your applications such as performance, SEO, and even user experience. All along, Next.js has always prioritized client-side rendering. All pages and components are actually rendered on the client side by default, meaning that by default, Next.js does not have any additional features on top of normal React. However, in the past few weeks, the team working on React has actually introduced the concept of React server components, and React itself has even added the support for server-side rendering. So with this additional of RSC, React server components, Next.js has also shifted its paradigm. Now instead of being client-side rendered by default, all Next.js pages and components are now server-side rendered, which means that all pages and components offer no interactivity by default. So here I have a Next.js 13 project running, and we can see that right now I have just a blank page. So Next.js 13 actually offers two strategies for routing right now. So right now we have the first one is the app directory, and the second one is the pages directory. So the pages directory is the pre-version 13, meaning that this is still the old version pages. And app directory is recently introduced in Next.js 13 and stabilized in Next.js 13.4. So the app directory, whatever goes under this app directory, is server-side rendered by default. However, the pages is still the old paradigm, which means it's client-side rendered by default. So Next.js 13 right now allows you to use both the app directory and pages directory within the same project, allowing you to slowly adopt the app directory as it becomes more stable and more adoption starts coming in. So here I have a Next.js 13.4 project running, and we can see that under the source directory, I have, the, I have the app directory, so this is the new paradigm versus the pages directory, which is the client side rendered. So I, ha I can have these two mixed together in one project, which allows me to go and uh, slowly build up the project. So I want to de demonstrate what's the real difference between client side and server side rendering. So if I come to slash client, we can see that it actually maps to pages slash client.tsx, right? So this is how the pages routing works. So any file that I create will directly be mapped to the URL. So right now, I return an empty component. We're going to use a mock API called the Rick and Morty API just to demonstrate how we will usually fetch data from an external server. So first, I'm going to declare a set of characters. So I'm going to fetch uh, all the characters from Rick and Morty from an uh, API. I'm going to save it to a state called character. So this is how you will usually go about it, right? Then we're going to have a use effect hook. And then we're going to use the fetch API to fetch from this URL. So this URL is going to give us a list of characters. We'll then take the response and we'll convert it to JSON. Then from the data, we can actually set the characters to data the results. So this is a normal workflow on how we fetch data from an external API and save it to the current state. Now that we have a state, we can check. If there's no characters, we return a loading state. However, if there's a characters, we have to go and map through the character and return the name of the character. So if we save that, we can see that it will render, right? We can see that it successfully renders. So this is a very normal paradigm that up to now, we have always taken it for granted and we have taken it. Okay, that's just how React works, right? But imagine like a React beginner comes in and look at this code. It's really unreadable. Like, cause you have to think about what's effect, what's use effect, and why is there an empty array here? And then what's this state, right? All I want is to fetch some data from external APIs and render it in my app. Why does it have to be so complicated? And I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna go and inspect the page source, right? And we can see that this is a very long HTML code, right? I'm, what I'm gonna do is gonna copy. So there's this tool online called Unminify, will basically take any uh, minified uh, HTML or JavaScript code and convert it to an un unminified version. So the reason why code is minified by default because we want to save white space characters so that we can save on space such that the transfer of data will be more efficient because we need to transfer less data since there's no white space and there's not much uh, other characters. So if you unminify it, we can see that. So it's a normal HTML page and basically what we have is a head and all the meta text. And we can see that all this script text, right? This is exactly the JS bundles that we are talking about here. So in client-side rendering, whenever the server sends back, right, we can see that the index.html or whatever HTML file references a lot of JavaScript files. And these JavaScript files are actually the ones that's responsible for uh, fetching the data and then appending it to the DOM nodes manually. So we can see that under the body, there is no data. Like, where is, where's all my HTML? Where's all my adjudicator rig? This text does not show up in the HTML file returned by the server. So you see, when I request slash client and we request for this component, right, the HTML that it returns has nothing in it. 
you see there's nothing, there's no information within the HTML file. All the HTML is actually being rendered and hydrated by this JavaScript. So hydration is basically the process of JavaScript taking external data or taking data from states and then rendering through the React rendering process like appending DOM nodes manually. So that's the, the hydration process. And then basically what it does is if you come back to the client and we'll come down to inspector, we can see that under here we have a div called id and next and that's all there is right under id of next and here inside we can see all our html dom nodes so what it does is actually it will look for the the dom node like the root node called underscore underscore next and then it will append all the start all the data after it has been fed from the api so that's client side rendering so let's look at server side rendering so under the app directory i have a page of tsx so this maps to the slash component right I have a slash component so right now it doesn't return me anything we're gonna try to do the same thing but look at what we're gonna do so first thing we notice is that this function is asynchronous in client right this function is a normal function but why is this async function because this function only runs once in the server so remember what server side rendering is when we make a request to the server it will run the code on the server rendering out the full html project before returning it what we're gonna do is fetch from the same api but note that this time it's not wrapped in a use effect we can directly call it on top or top level await within the function and then after we do the await we can convert it to json so they start in data and then we can look through the data to go and return this character id if i go and save this and come back to next app we can see that we have the same uh, app we have the same data being re written here however let's look at the page source this time let us unminify it and look what happens so we have the same h but look at how there's no more JavaScript bundle being exported here. Versus just now, there was a lot of JavaScript bundle needing to be referenced just to render that page. But right now, the HTML file return has directly all the, the, the H1s that I'm trying to declare. So that is the exact difference between client-side rendering and server-side rendering. The server has already done all the work, right? If I come down here, we can see that it has run it on this server. So it runs the code here, everything the code here runs. And then it formulates the HTML before sending it back to the browser. The browser can then look at the HTML and render it directly without needing to fetch additional JavaScript code. And to demonstrate it once more, I'm going to try to do console.log. If I press this, guess what happens? Look, it gets rendered on the server. So right now I'm running the terminal and if I refresh, you can see that it's being rendered on the server. This code is being run once, it's, being, it's fetching the data. If I come down to the console within the front page, we can see that, we can see that there is no console.log. Right, because whatever is sent back, the HTML is a, is a pure HTML page. Let's compare that to, let's say I go back to the client, and let's say I console.log, console.log, render on client. If I save this page, we can see that this is being console.log, this is being rendered on the client, right? So therefore, the console.log happens in the client versus the server component where everything is handled on the server. So that's the real difference between server-side rendering and client-side rendering. Another thing is that, let's say we want to use you stay in server components, right? So I have this form element. So let's say I have an input and I want to basically set search. I want to search for a character. I want to search for a character. We can use use state and then we can bind the value to the search variable and then on change, right? We'll take the E and we can set search to the E.target.value. So this is how we usually manage a local state within a component. But let's see if we ser serve this. We can see there's an error. It says that use state only works in client components. We have to add the use client directory at the top of the file to use it. Meaning, because everything here is run on the server, it doesn't understand what is state. All it's trying to do is return a plain HTML file. So it has no idea what state is. In order to use state within a, com a server-side component, what we have to do is we have to extract this out. So we have to delete the state we have to extract this out into a separate component. So here we have a form component. If I go into this form, right, we can see that we have to declare a use client directory on top of the file. And then we can use state here, right? And then we can then render it out in this form component. And then now here we can have the state. Within the form, we have the same thing. We have the input, we bind it to the state. And then we are just rendering out. You are searching for whatever input here. And we can say that it reflects here in terms of the state. So this is fine, right? But then we cannot basically have mixed state and interactivity within server-side components. And that's actually a good thing because the beauty of it is that it forces us to break out our components into very small and more manageable pieces. Instead of nesting everything and the state, we actually separate out whatever we want to be pre-rendered on the server versus whatever interactivity we need. Interactive component will have to be extracted out to a separate component using the client directory and then we can use all our normal react state. However, if you're fetching posts, fetching listings, and anything that we want to run, be run on the server using this server component, 
we can then map it out like this and import any interactive components that we want. It forces better practices in terms of breaking out components and this is a really helpful thing not in, term, in terms of developer experience and also user experience because users will get much faster page loads and much better search engine optimization. So I hope the explanation has helped you better understand client-side rendering versus server-side rendering. If you found this video helpful, leaving a like and subscribing to the channel will help me a lot. If you want to see how to better handle state in React, you can view this video up here. Thank you for watching.